Welcome to the land of Katahdin, a land of lonely mountains, a land of clear waters, a land of deep woods, a land that is beautiful yet harsh, a land that invites man to it, yet defies him. A land that is rich in Appalachian history. The mile-high mountain called Katahdin was named by the Abnaki Indians who once lived in its forests. Their word, Katahdin, means greatest mountain. In a land of many mountains, it is the undisputed crown jewel. Katahdin's peaks and some 40 other neighboring mountain peaks loom from within Maine's wilderness showpiece, Baxter State Park. 201,018 acres in size, this magnificent area attracts thousands of visitors from all parts of the world each year. They come to enjoy the mountain and forest environments that exist here in a wilderness park like none other. As people enter the park through one of two gates, they realize that they too have a responsibility to help maintain the park's wilderness character. Upon entering Baxter Park, one leaves behind the trappings of modern society. Hurried schedules and noisy streets are all but forgotten. The sights and sounds that one experiences in Baxter Park are all natural intrinsic values that park visitors come to know and appreciate. A refuge of natural splendor, Baxter State Park delights the camper It rewards the fishermen. It inspires the naturalist. It gratifies the landscape photographer as well as the wildlife photographer. It exhilarates hikers and mountain climbers. It is the result of one man's resolve to preserve this vast, untamed region of Maine woods, waters, and mountains for all future generations. Indeed, the story of Baxter State Park is the story of Percival Proctor Baxter. Unique among men of his time, as a member of the Maine Legislature in 1917, he first proposed a bill to acquire Mount Katahdin 
as a public preserve for the people of the state. In that day, for most Mainers, though, Katahdin was a mountain in a distant region involving a trip of great proportions to reach its granite flanks. Few legislators could be convinced to spend state money on a mountain deep in the Maine woods. As a legislator, and later as governor, Baxter continued his attempts to persuade the legislature to make an appropriation for the creation of a public preserve encompassing Katahdin. All of Mr. Baxter's bills were defeated, but he was not. He realized that he must create the park himself. By his own efforts and using his own money, he did just that. His first purchase of land was Mount Katahdin itself, and in 1931, Percival Baxter's visionary park began to take shape as he deeded this prized parcel over to the state of Maine as a public park and recreation area. For the next 31 years, Mr. Baxter continued to purchase land around Katahdin and the surrounding mountains. His land acquisitions ranged in size from a few acres to whole townships. By 1962, he had reached his 200,000 acre goal. Baxter's dream included a condition that the park be self-supporting. This he ensured by establishing a legal trust fund to protect the park and provide operating income. Baxter donated this region under the condition that the state of Maine hold the land in trust forever in its natural wild state for the benefit of the people of Maine for public park, public forests, and public recreational purposes and as a sanctuary for wild beasts and birds. Vast and wild, no place captures the very essence of the Maine woods like Baxter Park, and it is here that people come to encounter the Maine woods on its own terms. From its muddy pond bottoms to its mountain peaks, Baxter Park offers a diversity of conditions which its animal life has adapted to and the animals that dwell here are indeed wild creatures. The largest park in New England Baxter State Park has 10 major campgrounds. Eight of the 10 can be reached by automobile on the winding, narrow tote roads. The other two campgrounds require a hike of a few to several miles. All of the campgrounds are primitive. This means no electricity, hot water, or showers. The first time visitor to Baxter Park should be aware that strict rules are enforced to maintain the park's wilderness integrity Oversized vehicles, motorcycles, radios, televisions, and pets are restricted. Gas stations, paved roads, and stores do not exist within the park's boundaries. The Baxter State Park Authority, the park's official governing body, has implemented these rules, regulations, and restrictions to ensure the safety and well-being of its visitors and wildlife. As Mr. Baxter deeded each land parcel to the state, he stipulated that the area is to be maintained primarily as a wilderness, and recreational purposes are to be regarded as of secondary importance, and shall not encroach upon the main objective of the area, which is to be forever wild. With more than 175 miles of well-marked trails, the park satisfies the weekend mountain climber as well as the backpacker with a lengthy agenda. It is along these footpaths that one sees the park best. The trails should not be considered as only a way of getting from point A to point B. There is much to experience along the way. 
One should guard against always being in a hurry and take time to enjoy what is right at hand. The temptation may be great to stray off from the marked trails, but because of the ruggedness and remoteness of the region, such actions may place hikers and rescuers in life-threatening situations. A hike to Baxter Peak, Mount Katahdin Summit, means getting an early start in the day. It's important for hikers to have enough time to get to the top and back down before dark. Severe weather conditions can occur rapidly above tree line. Hikers should carry with them extra clothing, high energy foods, water, and a flashlight. The Appalachian Trail, a footpath which begins in Georgia and meanders north through 14 states, ends at Baxter Peak on Katahdin. One mile from Katahdin Stream Campground, hikers pass by the 80-foot high Katahdin Stream Falls. From the gateway, Appalachian Trail hikers are rewarded with spectacular mountain views. From this point, hikers step onto Katahdin's Tableland, a true plateau. Here, they encounter Thoreau Spring, named after philosopher naturalist Henry David Thoreau, who climbed Katahdin in 1846. At Baxter Peak, Appalachian trail hikers realize their 2,000 mile backpacking odyssey complete. After five months and two weeks, this trail hiker does just that. Long ago, one climber described the view from the top. It is as if a mirror had been broken and scattered over the green of the spruce and fir forest cover. One soon despairs of any attempt to count the number of lakes visible on a clear day. The Knife Edge, Katahdin's most spectacular feature, is a one mile long, steep and narrow ridge that has no rival in the Appalachian mountain chain. A hike across the Knife Edge is a hike never to forget. To fully appreciate Baxter State Park, you must reach for your hiking boots, slip on a pack, and drift into the backcountry. Russell Pond is the most remote campground, a location that is more than seven miles from the nearest road. It is at the geographical center of the park. Here, in the tranquility of the deep woods, one comes to understand the importance of places like Baxter State Park. For those with the desire to be truly alone, the park maintains a number of small backcountry campsites. Consisting of a single lean-to or limited tent space, these designated sites are scattered throughout the park's interior. As the early morning sun splashes Katahdin's icy flanks, one must marvel at one of God's greatest handiworks. In wintertime, too, people discover beauty and adventure within the park boundaries. A harsh time of the year High winds, snowstorms, and extreme cold are typical. Park roads remain unplowed through winter. Therefore, it is essential for wintertime users to be adequately equipped to meet the challenges brought on by the winter elements. Successful cold weather camping in the park requires extensive pre-trip planning and a special use permit. For the creatures that dwell here, the routine of daily living must continue in spite of the winter elements. 
To avoid the adversity of winter, some park animal species, especially birds, instinctively migrate each fall to warmer environments where there is open water and food that is not laden with snow. Some animals choose hibernation as a way of avoiding the chill of Maine winters, remaining inactive until spring. Others nap, awaking only occasionally to feed. For the pine marten, boreal chickadee, river otter, and moose, life goes on as usual, despite the ice and snow. Viewing wildlife in the park is often the highlight of any trip. There are few places which offer a better opportunity to observe and photograph moose, maybe even face to face. Probably the greatest animal attraction in Baxter Park, moose are plentiful throughout. The park is an enormous tract of diverse land and water features. In essence, it is a giant moose pasture, offering the moose watcher exciting and numerous opportunities to see moose in their natural habitat. The largest member of the deer family, moose are impressive creatures of the North Country that people enjoy seeing time and time again. Strips of velvet still hang from this bull's antlers. During their growing period, antlers are covered with fine-haired skin, rich with blood vessels which nourish the antlers as they grow. By early autumn, the antlers are fully developed, hard and bony. As the velvet dries, bulls rub it off against tree trunks and branches. Called a bell or dewlap, the flap of fur-covered skin hanging down from this bull's throat is yet another feature which contributes to a moose's good looks. Certainly the most majestic physical feature that a bull moose carries is its antlers. Pure bone, antlers are one of the fastest growing animal tissues in the natural world. To grow a large set of antlers requires a tremendous amount of nourishment. Like the leaves on a maple tree, antlers are deciduous, grown and shed each year. And moose, like people, need rest. Here, a bull moose naps. During the fall, a bull moose displays its antlers prominently. From mid-September through mid-October is their rutting or breeding season, a time of year when bull moose may be temperamental. During the rut, hikers should be especially cautious when in the vicinity of these large antlered creatures. Full grown, a typical bull may weigh over a thousand pounds. Cow moose weigh in between 600 and 800 pounds. Though moose may be encountered in all regions of the park, a few of the moose watching hotspots are Dwelly Pond, Russell Pond, McCarty Field, Tracy Pond, Littlefield Deadwater, Sandy Stream Pond, and Trout Brook Farm. In spring and summer, especially during the fly season, Moose can be found in the ponds feeding on aquatic plants. During the autumn rut, hikers may encounter two bulls challenging one another's dominance as they stake their claims on cow moose in the area. Though unusual, bull moose in the park have been observed in a clash resulting in death.
In the attempt to catch a glimpse of the wildlife, visitors often catch the wildlife glimpsing them. Here, a white-tailed deer peers through the understory as hikers pass by. Like moose, white-tailed deer are herbivores, or plant eaters. They browse on such vegetation as hardwood tips, barks, leaves, and more. A white-tailed fawn awaits its mother's return. If hikers happen upon a fawn by itself, they should realize that in most cases it has not been abandoned and that its mother is still nearby. For approximately 100 black bears, Baxter State Park is home. They are its largest carnivores. As the park maintains a carry-in, carry-out policy which eliminates the need for dumping stations with easy pickings, the bears here are truly wild. Because of a strong instinct to avoid human beings, few park visitors even see one. In fact, hikers relish the opportunity to see bears on the trails. It's important that food and garbage be stored properly so as not to invite a bear hazard. Regulations in the park prohibit the feeding of bears. This benefits people and bears. It ensures that bears here do not become conditioned to people and dependent upon them rather than foraging for natural foods. A rodent that feeds mostly on bark, the porcupine is right at home in the trees. Eastern chipmunks are more at home on the ground. Be on guard for pilfering red squirrels. This one made off with a snack. An easily recognized member of the weasel family, even at a young age, this striped skunk carries scent glands that are fully functional. A red fox scratches and then goes off in search of food. The pine marten, a medium-sized member of the weasel family, is active throughout the year. Opportunistic predators, in Baxter they feed extensively on voles but will eat a range of other foods including birds, berries, and squirrels. The beaver, North America's largest rodent, is common throughout the park. In building its dams of branches and mud, it creates wetland habitat for a host of other wildlife species. Its cousin, the muskrat, is equally at home in the water. Dividing their time between water and land, river otters are extremely inquisitive mammals. A semi-aquatic member of the weasel family, minks live on the edges of Baxter's ponds, lakes, streams, and brooks. From frogs to muskrats, they feed on whatever is most easily caught. During the summer, Baxter Park is home to more than 110 species of birds. A favorite is the common loon. Its distinctive calls can be heard throughout the park on its waters. The common loon sometimes referred to as the Great Northern Diver, may be seen and heard on Baxter's lakes and larger ponds from ice out in spring through autumn. An excellent swimmer and diver, loons here feed on a variety of water creatures. Their nests are usually constructed within a few feet of the water's edge and often the same nest sites are used each year. Park visitors are encouraged to enjoy and observe loons, but from a distance, and to stay well away from nest sites. Whether while paddling a canoe 
or making camp on a lake shore in the main woods, the haunting cry of the common loon causes one to contemplate what the wilderness experience might be like without it. The Abnaki Indians of centuries ago, in their canoes of birch bark, heard the loon's call as they paddled across these waters. Baxter State Park ensures that its call will continue to be heard. Here, an osprey, or fish hawk, plunges to the water for its prey. A black-backed, three-toed woodpecker flakes off this tree's bark for the insects underneath. Main state bird, the black-capped chickadee, is a year-round resident here. The American robin, a true thrush, summers in Baxter. Nocturnal hunters, barred owls pass the daytime hours resting. Near flowering plants, one is apt to glimpse a ruby-throated hummingbird. Found in moist woodlands, the American woodcock, or timberdoodle, is well camouflaged. Heard, more than seen, is the rose-breasted grosbeak. The spruce grouse, here a male, is especially at home in Baxter's coniferous woodlands. Riding on rising air, this common raven indulges into a display of aerial acrobatics. Here, cliff swallows gather mud for nest building. The rough grouse, often called a patridge by Maine natives, is a chicken-like bird of the woodlands. In protecting its young, a rough grouse hen will challenge would-be predators. The brook trout, or square tail, may be found in every section of the park. Here, a fisherman catches his breakfast meal. Each region of the park is characterized by typical species of trees, shrubs, and wildflowers. Factors such as elevation, moisture availability, and exposure influence plant growth in each area. As the demand on park resources increases, the challenge to maintain the park in its forever wild state becomes more important with each passing day. A park like none other, we will be forever grateful to a unique Maine man whose vision was forever wild. Percival Proctor Baxter died in 1969 at the age of 92, but his wild idea which began to take shape in 1931 in the form of a park continues to inspire people from all over the world. This land of lonely mountains, clear waters, and deep woods that the former Maine governor bought with his own money and then gave to the people of his state and nation is a legacy that has no equal. Mr. Baxter, in his own far-seeing way, said it best as he expressed the spirit of Baxter State Park and Katahdin. Perhaps 
someday you too will visit the Tartan, greatest mountain.